what's up guys this is Shipra and right now I'm holding Vivo Y27L smartphone. Vivo is the latest Chinese company to make debut in the Indian market and it has launched its Y series recently with its flagship model Y27L at 12,090. But Within two months, price dropped a bit and now you can get it online at 10,500 INR. So let's check out if it's among our list of best budget smartphones available in the market right now. The phone does come with a travel charger, USB 2.0 cable, user guide and earphones. It is a white color device, looks pretty classy. You'll find the 3.5mm audio jack, micro SD card slot at the top and micro USB 2.0 port fitted at the bottom. The power button and volume rockers placed at the right, while micro SIM tray slot can be seen on the left side of the device. On the front, it has a 5 megapixel front camera and an earpiece with a debossed Vivo logo right below to it, while capacitive touch buttons can be found towards the bottom of the display. Now back is a combination of silver and white color. Silver color here gives you an illusion of metallic body, but actually it's a plastic body. But to my surprise, it doesn't look cheap at all. The device is pretty slim at just 6.9 mm and weight at 137 gram. I could hold it comfortably and operate it with one hand and it is non-slippery at the same time. Perfect grip, great looks and sleek body make it appealing for sure. At the front, it comes with a 4.7-inch IPS LCD capacitive display with 720p resolution resulting in 312 ppi. Now one noticeable thing is the display is not scratch resistant. So within just a few days of usage, scratches on the screen will be pretty visible. While the display is quite vibrant and has good legibility under direct sunlight. Colors are sharp, overall a vivid display by Vivo. The smartphone packs in 1GB RAM and 16GB of internal storage, which you can expand up to 128GB via a microSD card. Now that seems like taking a step back. Competition has got so high that even sub-10K smartphones are having not just 2GB of RAM, but they have started featuring 3GB of RAM these days. Here, Vivo could have packed at least 2 gigs of RAM. Now, if we just ignore the flaw for a moment, Performance was acceptable as the Snapdragon 410 chipset powered the device. It handled multitasking best in its limit. Gaming was smooth but when played GPU hard games, I faced occasional frame drops. Coming to software, the device runs its own skin FunTouch 2.0 OS on top of Android 4.4.2 KitKat. Now this left me furious. I mean, uh, why a company would install two versions old software when you have Marshmallow out there in the market? It's a nonsense thing to do. Lots of games and apps at least require Lollipop to run on. For instance, I wasn't able to download the wearable app to connect my smartwatch because it simply needed the latest version of Android OS. Now keeping the issue aside for a while, FunTouch OS is very smooth UI with a refreshing touch. The super screenshot features let you capture multiple screenshots that can be saved as one long picture. Pretty impressive. You can also do the screen recording and take funny screenshots too. Well, Vivo FunTouch proves here true to its name. The device already had few third-party apps such as a Facebook, WeChat, WhatsApp, WPS Office and few proprietary apps like uh, the Log, iManager, iMusic, iTheme and Vivo Cloud. Well, uh, for Vivo Cloud, you need to set up an account first. The show doesn't just end here guys. It does come with the visitor mode which allows setting up another password pattern. Once you unlock the device with this password, the second person won't be able to access your contacts, photos, videos or whatever you don't want them to look at. Pretty good feature I would say. Now moving to the camera, 8 megapixel rear and 5 megapixel front snapper was good enough to take decent images in bright light, but somewhere fall behind in capturing details. Low light shots were dull and full of grains and even HDR mode couldn't justify with the lighting conditions. The camera app is very minimal but loaded with a lot of features and different modes 
such as face beauty hdr panorama night bouquet watermark etc now the battery is another thing that i liked about the device it packs in 2260 non removable lipo battery it doesn't support fast charging but honestly speaking i didn't feel it require that i was able to charge it fully in an hour and a half and that lasted for 9 to 10 hours easily on regular usage the smartphone supports 4g lte wi-fi gps and bluetooth like all basic connectivity options you need network reception and call quality were good light sensor proximity compass and gravity sensors are on board too and works efficiently what i found about the device is the device may have few great features it has a good display it looks great and 4g support of course but it appears a bit overpriced when it comes to justify the specs however the company has put a lot of thought and efforts in front touch os but specs surely seem to be a downside for this smartphone thanks for watching this video friends i hope this was a helpful review for you so if you have enjoyed the video please hit the like and subscribe button i'll talk to you in next one till then have a great time